Uh, one of the things that we know about the brain is that it's, it's kind of uh, different parts of it func have different functions. So, for example, what's your name? Samantha. Okay. So if we took Samantha here, and they actually did these types of experiments a number of years ago. If we took Samantha here, and she's wide awake, and we put a little anesthesia just on her head so she can't feel anything. You know, like when you get numb when you go get a cavity drilled or something. Put some anesthesia here. We're going to shave your hair. And then we're just going to cut your skull with a, with a saw. And then we're going to take this little part of your skull off. And there underneath will be your brain. <laughs> what we're going to do then is we're going to take a little pointer. And very gently, we're going to touch a part of your brain. And if we were to touch Samantha, right? What was your name? If we were to touch Samantha right here, you would notice that her eyebrow would twitch. If we were to touch her a little bit further down, then you would see her shoulder jump a little bit. A little bit further down in the same line, and maybe her hip would twitch. We get all the way down to the side here, and then her toe moves a little bit. So if we do the same thing on the other side, then the other side of her body would move in the same way. If we move a tiny bit back and do the same thing, then instead of her eyebrow twitching, she would say, oh, my eyebrow kind of feels tingly. Then we move a little bit further down, she'd say, oh, my shoulder feels a little tingly. So what's happening here is the brain, different parts of the brain are responsible for different activities. That part of the brain we call the motor cortex because it's involved in moving different parts of the body. The other one is, doesn't really matter the name, but it is responsible for getting, uh, for getting feeling. And if you have damage to that part of the brain, to that very specific part of the brain, maybe everything else about you is just fine, but you can no longer feel it when someone touches your shoulder. So the brain is kind of broken into these little pieces. That's one of the things that we've uh, learned in neuroscience. So you are here at school. Right? You come here to school every day, and our job here at schools is to teach you things, and your job is to learn. Right? The brain has a remarkable ability to learn, even if you don't want it to. And that's a little bit of what we're going to show you today. There are two types, two main types of learning that happen in the brain. We call them explicit, and we call them implicit. I want to give you a couple of examples of these. So what types of things do you learn in, uh, in history? What's the one thing you've learned in history? Anybody know something from history? Great, about the pioneers. Yeah. Like the presidents? Mm hmm. Presidents, pioneers. How about, uh, gosh, how about science? Anything, anybody learned anything about science? Yeah. Okay, electrons, protons. How about PE? Has anybody learned anything in PE? What do you learn in PE? Um, I learned how to play dodgeball. Great, learn how to play dodgeball. So these explicit things that you learned, those are the types of things that are facts, things that you remember, things that you can tell somebody else. You can tell them who uh, the first president was. You can tell them who the current president is. You can tell them something about the pioneers. You can tell them about electrons. You can tell them about protons. Implicit memory is a different type of memory. That's like learning how to play dodgeball, learning how to do karate. Right, these are things that you don't normally uh, think about learning, but you just learn them by doing them. So these are things that you remember and things that you do. Those are the two types of memory. And interestingly, these two different types of learning happen in two different parts of the brain. A lot of the time, you're aware of learning happening but sometimes you aren't even aware of your brain learning. And that is what we're going to do today. We're going to have a little activity where we're going to show you how your brain can learn and that you might not even be aware of it when it's happening. 